thing. Oh, it's popping open good. It's on. It's popping open good. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. You hear it popping open? Yeah. Hold on, we gotta do this. Uh -uh. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. It's a toasty 104 here today on the homestead. But to be honest with you, it actually doesn't feel that bad. So this big heat wave is sweeping across the country that will be gone by the time this video airs next week is about the weeniest heat wave I have ever seen. Even though the temperatures are higher, it actually feels better outside this week than it did last week. And that all has to do with the humidity. This week we have very little to no humidity. So even though the temperatures are in the low 100s, doesn't feel that bad out here. Week before this one, we had temperatures in the mid 90s and humidity up around 100%, which is what we usually have. And it's just stifling outside. So I'll take this right here, 104 no humidity, all day every day over anything between 85 and 95 with our normal humidity like i said it feels pretty good out here to me and it seems to me that our plants kind of feel the same way now we've been having to water a lot because it's so so dry around here but things like the tomatoes over there look just fine they're doing great without any humidity even though the temperatures are really high so the heat wave wasn't all it was cracked up to be but we still got some things we need to do in the garden today First, we need to take care of these sweet potatoes behind me here. We need to side dress those. We need to heal those, check on them, see how they're doing. And then we're gonna head on over to the watermelon patch, have a little fun there, and see if we can find us a ripe, delicious, seedless orange watermelon. So here's our little sweet potato patch. We've got three rows here. On the end, we've got Georgia Jet there. Then we've got Orleans, and we've got Puerto Rico here. Now the Georgia Jet row doesn't look near as filled out as the other rows. I didn't have quite as many slips of that variety, so we didn't make it all the way to the end of this row when we were planting. And I also lost a few slips with that variety. I don't know if it's because it wasn't getting as much water on the end of the plot there. Not really sure why, but the Orleans and the Puerto Rico rows are looking good. So we should still have plenty of sweet taters to harvest and eat. So what we want to do today is come in here and kind of take these vines that are sprawling outward, concentrate them more towards the center of the row, and we're gonna do a little side dressing, give them a little fertilizer, and then we're gonna heal them up just like we do regular taters. And you may notice here this Puerto Rico variety isn't trying to sprawl out near as much as this Orleans variety here is. I think that's because the Puerto Rico is more of a bush type sweet tater. Now it will sprawl out a little bit, but not near as much as these more kind of traditional varieties that like to climb all over the place. So what I'm gonna do here is take these vines that are trying to climb on this pine straw, and I'm kind of center them up along this soil here. And when we bury those, that should give us a little extra tater production right there, which kind of get everything in line with the row. So now you can see, especially with this Orleans variety here, we got all the plant material kind of tucked in nicely along that row there so it's not sprawling on the straw. And we might have to rake back the straw just a hair bit more before we heal these, but now it'll be a lot easier to side dress and heal them since we've got all those sprawling vines kind of tucked in there. Now as far as what we're going to use to side dress these, I'm going to use this stuff right here, this sulfate of potash, sweet taters, like a lot of extra potassium. I bought this 10 pound bag last year, I think from Seven Springs. Doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff because I think the analysis is 0050. So it doesn't take much of this stuff. A 10 pound bag will last you quite a while. So we're not gonna use near as much of this as we usually use with like the Nature Safe fertilizers. Probably half to three quarters of one of these smaller pitchers per row should be a plenty. All right, so we had to pull back that straw a little bit more so we could heal them up. We got them side dressed. We got them healed up a little bit. 
not a lot yet but looks a lot more tidy than it did and hopefully that extra shot of potassium will help us get more sweet taters now this is probably not the only time we're going to heal these sweet taters my friends over at steel plant company when they see pictures of our sweet taters growing or videos they always tell me you're not healing them high enough you got to really really pull that dirt up around them so we're definitely going to heal them at least one more time maybe a couple more times we may end up having to remove some more of that straw or move it out of the way just so we can get to some more soil but my intentions are to heal these really really tall all right, so now that we're done with the sweet potatoes, let's have a little fun with these watermelons. But first, I want to show you something right close to those watermelons. So y'all remember that soybean cover crop we planted on the last video? Man, this stuff came up fast. With all this warm weather and then really hitting it good with the tripod there overnight, we got this stuff to come up in just a few days. And it may look a little sparse now, but it's gonna fill in really good. So I'm really excited the germination I've gotten on these soybeans so far and now for these wonderful watermelons now this watermelon patch has come a long long way since it was struggling in the beginning now there are some things we grow in our gardens where I'm pretty confident in my abilities I don't really worry about it a whole lot I kind of know the drill it's kind of like riding a bike we plant it and we expect a pretty good result but these seedless watermelons here are a different story so this is only our second year growing seedless watermelons and I've worried about these a bunch. As old Carl Childers say, I studied on it quite a bit. So as I told you several videos ago, we're not gonna set any per thousand square foot watermelon production records here, but we have been harvesting several of these already. I think I've harvested four of the seedless watermelons and they're really, really tasty. So happy about what I'm seeing so far. I'll probably still worry about them just as much next year though. So let's take a look at what we've got out here and then we'll see if we can find any ripe ones. So we've got three different varieties planted out here. You can't really distinguish the rows anymore. It's all intertwined. We've got the orange crisp seedless. We've got tender sweet orange as a pollinizer for that seedless variety. And then over on that end somewhere, we've got those Alibaba watermelons planted. So these smaller round ones that look like that right there, that's the orange crisp seedless. Some of these are about the size of a basketball. Some of them are a little smaller than a basketball. So they're not real big, but just big enough. So there's another orange seedless right there. Now the pollinizer for these, the tender sweet orange, is an elongated watermelon and it has a darker rind on it like that right there. And from what I could tell, these are gonna get a good bit bigger. I step in here a little bit, see that one there? That's a pretty good sized watermelon. And I checked it earlier and it's not close to being ripe yet. So I think those are gonna get pretty big, a good bit bigger than these seedless ones. And then over here on this end, we've got some of these Alibaba watermelons that are coming along. I know these aren't close to being ripe yet, just based on when we planted them. But these have a very light rind to them. Some of them look more elongated than others. We got two of them side by side right there. So this one here looks a little bit elongated, but kind of more round. Whereas those look like they're gonna end up being kind of the same dimensions as those tender sweet orange watermelons. And although it's very, very dry around here, this no-till plot has a good little moisture reservoir under that top layer of compost there. And we have been feeding these with the drip tape, keeping them happy but they also have that good water reservoir down there that those kind of trailing vines can feed from. What's interesting to me, you can see we've got some crabgrass popping up through those watermelon vines. And that crabgrass just looks like it is water starved. It takes some dry, dry weather to get crabgrass to shrivel up. But that is for sure shriveled up. But you see the watermelon plants aren't. They still look nice and happy. Now before we pick one or two of these, I want to show you the sign I use to tell me that a watermelon is ripe and ready to pick. Now this may not be the sign that everybody uses. Everybody seems to have their own way of telling when a watermelon is ripe, but this is the one that has worked for me the most, so I'll show you how we tell. Okay, so I'll get in here as close as I can without trampling everything. So we've got an orange seedless watermelon right here. We can see where it's connected to the main vine right there. Right where it's connected, 
you'll see this little thing here we call that a tendril and what we want to look for is when that tendril turns brown all the way down to the main vine here so when it dries up completely now we can see that this one's only about a third of the way or half of the way dry so it's still got a ways to go it started drying up here but hasn't dried down here yet so this one's not quite ready now here's another one we can see in here this one's not quite as big as the ones I've been harvesting but if we look right there we can see that tendril is dried all the way down so that one there by my best judgment is ready and then right here I think we got a nerdiness ready so if we look down in here wait on the camera to brighten up a little bit you can see that tendril right there you can see how it's dried up all the way which tells me we need to get this one too so that's the method I use to tell if they're ripe now I'm going to pick these two and we're going to cut at least one of them open I get real nervous about doing this on camera because these watermelons could make me look quite foolish my method of telling when they're ripe has worked so far on the other four I've harvested and for some reason neither one of these are close to being ripe I do have a backup plan I have half a cold one in the fridge I can at least show you what they're supposed to look like so let me go grab these two we'll cut them and we'll see what happens so I got my official watermelon helper out here which one do you think we should cut Tata? -ta? this one okay all right that one has the long this one has the longest stem yeah cool. you think that means it's ready yeah okay we're gonna see Dang. oh it's popping open good it's on it's popping open good that's a good sign that's a good sign you hear it popping open yeah hold on we gotta do this uh, uh. It's ready. I bet it's so good like those others. Taste it. Do you want to taste it first? Yeah. Here you go. Oh, bless you. Bless you. Mm. Taste it. Mmm. Mm. Man, that's so good, Tata. -ta. Yeah. Mmm. I put it in my mind. You don't want any more? No. You full? You don't eat too many ice creams? Yeah. I can think I could eat a whole one of these and that one what do you think that, that one uh, 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 this half is going to be for me and that half is going to be for you mm. okay we'll go put that in the refrigerator for you okay that's fine that sound like a plan and, and this is your one yeah this is mine i'm about to eat every bit of it these watermelons are so good so good is orange watermelon your favorite yeah you like them better than red watermelon I think I do too. Thanks. I wish y'all could try that right there. It is so, so good. I've been known to drink the juice out of them when I get through eating the goodie out of it as well. Now, thankfully, this watermelon here didn't make me look silly, and our ripeness determination standards still rang true. Now, there are some people that say these seedless watermelons, these newer varieties, don't taste as good as some of those old seeded varieties, and some of those old seeded varieties are very, very tasty, no doubt about that. If you've got kids, seedless is the way to go. They are more difficult to grow, but if you can figure out how to grow them, this is the way to go. That way, you don't have to pick all the seeds out for them. You just give them a half a watermelon and let them go to town. Now you might be wondering, does this orange watermelon taste any different than red watermelon? And I don't know if I was blindfolded if I could tell a difference really, but I can tell you this is the prettiest watermelon I've ever grown and it's mighty, mighty tasty and I wouldn't trade it for any other watermelon out there right now. And one more thing about looking at that tendril to see when the watermelon is ripe. If you've only got a few watermelons, out in your plot and you go out there and look at them every day and are waiting on that tendril to get dry don't pick it right when it gets dry let it sit out there a few days after it completely dries and then it'll be at peak ripeness if you pick it on the day it goes completely dry it might not be quite all the way there I've got enough of them out here I can't keep an eye on all these so by the time I find the tendril dry it's been sitting there for a few days and it's usually just right and I'll show y'all a little trick here if you want to get all the juicy goodness out of one of these what you do right here cut your little tunnel out like that right there 
Mm -hmm. I don't get no better than that. So I hope you enjoyed this short but sweet, pun intended, video today. And either on the next video or the one after that, I'm going to show you how we've been fertilizing these watermelons, injecting some of that AgriThrive through the drip system, and also addressing an issue some people have been contacting us about on Facebook and Instagram about whether that AgriThrive clogs up the drip system or not. And I'll show you the easy fix for that. And do let me know in the comments below what's the best tasting watermelon variety out there in your opinion. So what's the best watermelon seedless or seeded that you've ever had? If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. We even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got hats, shirts, recipes, a garden blog, recommended products, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.